Welcome back to BNG Hockey, where it's always black and gold. This is episode three of our weekly recaps, and we're going to do things a little bit differently in this episode. I do have four games to talk about instead of three, so to make this video a little bit quicker for you guys and a little bit quicker for me, I'm going to do more of a general review of each game instead of a really in-depth look, and then we'll dive right into our studs and duds segment. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. In number one, it's the Boston Bruins against the Pittsburgh Penguins. They win by a score of four to one. The Bruins outshot the Penguins in this game 20-17, their power play was 1-2, for two, and Pittsburgh's power play was 0-3. for three. This was the 10th straight home win over the Pens for the Boston Bruins. I thought that was a really impressive stat. Anytime Crosby, Malkin, and the gang come into town, that's a tough game. So the fact that the Bruins keep rattling off wins here at home against the Penguins is a really good sign for the team. Halak was the starting goaltender in this game. Rask was not the backup. They gave him the full day off. And obviously he recovered because he played in games after that, so Vladar was the backup. They lose Studnika and Grizzlick to injuries in this game, and Par Lindholm was inserted into the lineup for his first game this year. We finally get production from the fourth line in this game. In last week's video, I had both Corrali and Wagner as duds in my studs and duds segment. Then they come out the next game and prove me wrong. They both scored goals in the first period. The Penguins' only goal was Cody Cece in the first period. He's a defenseman, not very good. He walks in and just beats Halak. Really bad defensive breakdown by the Bruins. And we also get two goals from the captain. Patrice Bergeron continues to play really good, even without David Pasternak, and continues to be an incredible leader for this team, like we all knew he would be. This is a big win here by the Bees. The Penguins have not looked right this entire year. Malkin is playing really bad. Latang hasn't been great. And even Crosby has had a couple games where he's held off the score sheet. And that doesn't happen much to Sidney Crosby. So it's huge that the Bruins are capitalizing on the Penguins not being the Penguins right now. And they add another win to their totals. Game number two, it's the Boston Bruins against the Washington Capitals. It's their first game against Zdeno Chara since he left the team, and they lose by a score of 4-3 to three in an overtime heartbreaker. The Bruins outshot the Capitals 43-23 to 23 in this game. The Bruins' power play was 1-4, for four, and the Capitals' power play was a perfect 1-1. One for one. Tuka Rask is in net, and Carson Kuhlman and Connor Clifton are subbed in for the injured Jack Sudnika and Matt Grizzlick. This was an interesting game because the Capitals come out, they play really well, but the Bruins are still getting chances. They're somehow down 3-0 as the Capitals get goals from Nicholas Backstrom, Trevor Van Riemsdyk, and Richard Panic. The one by Backstrom was an absolute snipe, but the other two goals are from depth guys. And that's a big problem with the Boston Bruins. They never get enough goals from their depth guys. And whenever they do, they usually win. And whenever they don't, we always bring it back up as a reason why they might have lost. But they do get another goal from Nick Ritchie. It's his fourth of the year to make it 3-1. Then we get goals from Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy. I love the McAvoy goal. He's crashing in at the net to tie it up to send the Bruins to overtime last minute. David Pasternak was back in this game. He always opens up the game for everybody else because they're focused on defending him. I think that's a big reason why McAvoy was able to come down close to the net and get this goal. So I love that the Bruins didn't give up. It's tough to be down 3 nothing with your old captain on the other side. And they did the work to battle back. They go to overtime, and Ovi breaks our hearts. He scores. It's his second of the season, probably 7,000th goal all time. I understand it's Alex Ovechkin, so I shouldn't be too mad at Tuka Rask for letting this in. But if you go back and watch, Rask doesn't even move. He had a really bad game. It was one of those games, if you're a Tuka Rask hater... You do have a little bit of evidence here. Rask has those games where it seems like he's just not trying. And I know that he is trying, and I know, like I said, it's Alex Ovechkin. He scores goals. It's what he does. But if you go back and look at it, it was a really soft goal to let up. Ovi shot it from really far away. Backstrom shot it from really far away earlier. And even though they're great shots, you would kind of hope that your elite-level goaltender would make a save there, especially when the team did everything to battle all the way back. So it's really tough. The Bruins get a point out of this one, so that's huge. They battle back. They steal the point. But it would have been really nice to really finish the job here and get the win after working so hard. Game number three, we're looking for sweet revenge against the Washington Capitals, and they get it. They win by a score of 5-3. to three. The Bruins outshot the Capitals 33-26 to in this game. Their power play was 0-4, for 4, and the Capitals' power play was 1-4. for 4. Yaroslav Halak is in net. I think we're all happy to see that after Rask had a bad game. And Craig Smith gets moved up to play with David Krejci. Chris Wagner gets moved up to play with Charlie Coyle. And Carson Kuhlman gets bumped down to the fourth line. 
Coming into this game, we're feeling good. The Bruins might come out and score first so they don't have to battle back. It's a new day, it's a new game, and Zdeno Chara scores. It's his second goal of the season, and now we're all heartbroken once again. We all saw it coming. He was shooting a lot more the game previous. He was on the power play a little bit. I haven't watched the Capitals too much this season, but I highly doubt that Zdeno Chara is playing on their power play. So it was very clear that the team wanted him to score against the Bruins and Chara wanted to score against the Bruins. He finally does. We got that heartbreak out of the way, but it wasn't done yet because the Capitals get goals from Sprung and Carlson. The Carlson shot was unreal. His fourth goal of the season from the stud defenseman. And now the Bruins are down 3 0 once again. And you feel like there's no way they're going to make another incredible comeback. But David Pasternak says otherwise. He gets his first and second goals of the season. He played pretty good in the last game. You figured it would take him a while to get up to game speed and back to that elite level. He did pick up an assist in the first game, and now he's back to scoring goals already in game two. Craig Smith, his third goal of the season, ties it up 3-3. And then Brandon Carlo, he scores his second goal of the season, and the Bruins have the lead. Love to see Carlo getting on the board. I said that last time. Love that he's shooting more, getting more involved in the offense. The Bruins' defense as a whole has played with a lot of speed this year. It's been really good. That's why they really haven't missed guys like Krug and Chara. They're playing fast. They're playing physical as well, and they're not afraid to take chances. On the Smith goal, Lozon pinched. A great play over to Smith. That's not usually Lozon's game, but he had the confidence to go into the zone, deep in the zone, and make a play. And Bruce Cassidy encourages that. I love that. He tells these young defensemen, go in. If there's an opportunity to make a play, make it. And if you make a mistake, that's fine. We know that you're all young and still developing, and we would rather that you take the chance on offense and then mess up a little bit on defense and learn from that so you can be better next time. But it's been paying off so far for the Bruins. Carlo, another great goal, and the Bruins have the lead. Brad Marchand gets his sixth of the season on the empty net, and they win 5-3. This is awesome for the Bees to get this win over their former captain and make another incredible comeback. But they weren't done making incredible comebacks quite yet. Game number four was the best game from this past week by far. The Bruins against the Philadelphia Flyers, and they win by a score of 4-3 to three in overtime. The Bruins outshot the Flyers 35-25. to 25. They were 3-4 for four on their power play, and Philly was 0-2 for two on their power play. Tuka Rask is back in net, and somehow Anton Bleed has found a way back into the lineup once again. Let's talk about this game. I hope you had your TV on right at the start of this game, because if you didn't, you missed David Pasternak's third goal of the season. He comes in, really nice move. I love his confidence. I love that he's willing to try anything, and he gets to the net, and that's why he scores. It goes off a defenseman, goes off a post, but it's in, and they're up one nothing. and Pasta continues to be an impact player just a couple games into this season for him. And the Bruins dominated the rest of this first period. They really had the Flyers backed up in their own zone almost the entire 20 minutes, but they didn't capitalize. They only got the one goal. They could have had two, three, maybe even four. And anytime you dominate a team like that and don't capitalize, that usually comes back to hurt you, and it does. The Flyers get goals from Kevin Hayes, his sixth goal of the season, Voracek, his third goal of the season, and Joel Farabee, his sixth of the season. So some of the Flyers' top guys step up, and now the Bruins are down once again, this time by a score of 3-1. to one. And you're really frustrated because, like I said, the Bruins were dominating, and the Bruins were out shooting the Flyers. So you would hope that Tuka Rask could get them a save here or there. I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of these games where Rask sees a lot less shots than the other goaltender, but is still letting in the same amount or more goals. So that's just something to keep an eye on. But overall, Rask has had a pretty good season, and he's their starting goalie. They're not going anywhere without him. We saw that in last year's playoffs. But just something to keep an eye on, because that will be a bad trend, and they'll start to lose games if that continues to be the case. But the Bruins are not done yet. This team is never, ever out of it. They've shown us that multiple times this season. David Pasternak gets his fourth and his fifth for the hat trick. Two incredible goals. The last one was insane. The Bruins pulled the goalie. They couldn't even find a way into the zone. They somehow do. Pasternak finds a bouncing puck and slaps it home to send them to overtime with seconds left. And then the captain, his sixth goal of the season, Patrice Bergeron, scores on the power play, 
right at the beginning of OT. They had Bergeron, Marsha, and Pasternak and Krejci. You kind of knew it was over when they're out there on a four-on-three situation. And the Bruins steal another great game. The Flyers get a point out of this one, so they can be happy about that. But all in all, the Bruins dominated in the first, and it ends up working for them, even though they tried to give this game away. And David Pasternak, man, we missed you. And that leads us right into our studs and duds segment. David Pasternak is my first stud. Five goals, two assists, plus two, and 19 shots in three games. It is unreal having him back in this lineup. The Bruins played pretty well without him, but having Bergeron, Marsha, and Pasternak back together, it's not even fair, and Pasto went off in his first three games. My second stud, it's the captain, Patrice Bergeron. Three goals, six assists, plus three, and 12 shots this week for the Bruins. He continues to be clutch. He continues to be an incredible leader for this team. And it's like I said with David Pasternak, having Marshan, Bergeron, and Pasta on one line just isn't fair. And Patrice Bergeron continues to be a big piece for this team, even as he gets older. My third stud, Brandon Carlo. This one could have gone to a lot of people. McAvoy had a great week. Marshan had a great week. But Brandon Carlo, a goal, an assist, plus five, and six shots on goal. He continues to be an incredible shutdown defenseman, as you can see there with the plus five. The other team is not scoring when he is out there. He's been a big part of the Bruins' penalty kill being tremendous. And now offense is starting to run through him. He's getting the puck to the net. He's not afraid to take shots and make plays. He gets his second goal of the season. So all in all, I have loved Carlo's game this entire season. And this week, I thought he played fantastic. For the dud, spoiler alert, I picked all three players who were called up from the taxi squad. And I know I shouldn't expect much from these guys. I said it last week when I put the fourth line guys in as my duds. I'm not going to pick total bums every week because these guys aren't going to come in and score 50 goals. I understand that. But it was hard to find any of the top Bruins who really had a bad week. And all three of these guys, anytime they're in the lineup, I don't understand why they're playing. And there's no better example of that then Anton Bleed. He comes in in last night's game, the comeback win against the Flyers. He had zero points. He did have one shot on goal, and he takes a penalty. This guy has been called up to the Bruins for as long as I can remember. Somehow he's only 25, and he never does a thing when he gets called up. I tweeted it out. You can follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, at BNG Hockey. But I was just kind of like, this guy found a way again to make this team. And whenever he's in the lineup, he's not fast. He's not really physical. He doesn't have any offensive upside. So I am really just done with Anton Bleed. And hopefully we don't have to watch him much longer. And he either becomes a permanent Providence Bruin or somehow gets sent away eventually. But he does nothing for me and nothing for the Bruins. And in fact, in this Flyers game, he hurt them by taking a penalty. Next up, we have Carson Kuhlman. He had zero points, was a minus one, and he had three shots on goal, but he was playing in the top six, and I would want him to do a lot more than that. And when you're playing with a passer like David Krejci, you should have even more shots on goal than that. And if you're being called up, you would think he would just put everything to the net and try and get something and generate some offense. I know there's some people out there who like this kid. He is pretty fast, so he does bring an element of speed. But other than that, I really don't see it with this guy. He gets pushed around, and that's another guy that I really don't think adds anything to the lineup when he's playing. And last but certainly not least, it's Par Lindholm, who's just a basic guy. He just comes into the lineup. He played 12 minutes, and I couldn't tell you one thing that he did in those 12 minutes. He had no points. He wasn't a plus. He wasn't a minus. He doesn't shoot the puck. He's just out there existing being a hockey player to fill a spot. And I realize the Bruins have some injuries, so these guys would not be playing otherwise. But Par Lindholm, when they signed him to a two-year deal, that was a really interesting move because I don't even think he's a fourth liner in the NHL. That's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you guys thought of this week's recap. Did you like a shorter version of the recap of each game? Leave that down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big like. And if you haven't already, subscribe.